Welcome to the second part of the advanced level in the Nano Networking and Molecular Communications module. My name is Tuno Tuju. In this part, we will discuss the effects of degradation of the messenger molecules on communication via diffusion. One of the most important concerns in molecular communications is the residual or leftover molecules from the previous symbol duration. These delayed molecules cause intersymbol interference and may result in incorrect decoding of the current bit. However, we know from biology that every biodegradable molecule degrades with a specific rate. Note that the degradation process may be facilitated by an enzyme or it may work by itself. If you overlook degradation, you may end up with, it, with incorrect analysis of the diffusion process. That's what we are going to focus on in this part of the lecture. For example, we know each drug has a specific rate of degradation, lambda. The treatment schedule is designed according to this degradation rate. We define the time required for the concentration of a specific molecule to drop to half of its original value as the half-life of that molecule. The half-life depends on the type of the molecule. It may vary from milliseconds to years. Since our target is to minimize the effect of residual molecules on the upcoming time slots, we would prefer that molecules with shorter half-life. One well-known use of degradation in the molecular communication process in nature takes place in the neuromuscular junction. The neuromuscular junction is a gap where the neuron meets the muscle cell. This gap is called the synaptic cleft. When you look at the figure, you can see where the synaptic cleft is. It's between the neuron and the muscle cell. The synaptic cleft is a closed environment surrounded by the myelin sheath. The nerve cell releases neurotransmitter molecules called acetylcholine. These are the small balls in the figure. When the acetylcholine molecules bind on the acetylcholine receptors, they cause the ion channel to open, allowing the passage of sodium and potassium ions, as you can see in the figure here. This ion exchange triggers contraction of the molecule. The muscle cell must be released at some point so that it can contract again later. To enable the release of the muscle cell, the synaptic cleft must be cleaned from the acetylcholine molecules. That's where the acetylcholine S-rays comes into play. The acetylcholine S-rays molecules degrade the acetylcholine molecules down into their building components, acetate and choline. The acetate and choline molecules in the synaptic cleft are collected back by the neuron to be used to construct acetylcholine esterase for the next round. The acetylcholine molecules travel from the neuron to the muscle cell via diffusion. When we plot the probability of an acetylcholine molecule hitting the muscle cell, we observe that it forms a right long tail distribution, as you can see here in the figure. This figure tells us that most of the messenger molecules arrive at the destination in a short time, but there are many molecules that take the long way to the destination and arrive too late. So the basic problem here is to decide where to cut the current symbol duration and start the next symbol. If you take the symbol duration too long, that means more to the right of the figure, you will have transmitted fewer bits in a given time period. If you take the symbol duration too short, that means to the left, then there will be many residual molecules that are left over to the following symbol duration. The residual uh, messenger molecules may cause incorrect decoding of the next symbol, causing intersymbol interference. However, if you consider the effect of degradation, you find that some of these delayed messenger molecules will degrade in the environment before arriving at the receiver. Of course, if the half-life of the messenger molecule is short enough. Thus, the intersymbol interference effect may be less than you would expect. So, we can utilize the concept of destruction process to improve communications. We adapt the acetylcholine, acetylcholine esterase interaction for this purpose. Let's consider a hypothetical cylindrical channel, as we see in the figure again here between the transmitter and the receiver nanomachines. Let's assume you place destroyer molecules, analogous to the acetylcholine esterase molecules, on the inner surface of this channel. Thus, 
When a messenger molecule touches the surface of the channel, it is simply destroyed. This results in many messenger molecules to be destroyed as they are diffusing randomly from the transmitter to the receiver nanomachine. However, note that the molecules that get destroyed are the ones which depart from the direct path towards the receiver. So, if you would like to form an analogy to the wireless communications case, we are discarding the non-line-of-sight component. Thus, the molecules that would take the long way towards the destination and get delayed to create intersimple interference are discarded from the environment in the beginning. This approach decreases the power of the received signal, but it also reduces intersimple interference significantly. You may find the detailed results of this approach in the third paper among the references at the end of this presentation. You may find the basic parameters used to achieve these results in this table here. As expected, if you make the cylindrical channel very narrow, not many molecules will succeed in arriving at the other end of the channel. That can be observed in the lowest curve in the figure on the left. Also, as the length of the channel increases, the molecules are more likely to touch the surface of the cylinder and get destroyed. Therefore, all curves have a decreasing trend as the distance d between the transmitter and the receiver decreases. Since all messenger molecules get destroyed in the case of narrow channel, when the channel length exceeds 8 micrometers, the average hitting time is not observed for the bottommost curve in the figure on the right, as you can see here. Since the nanomachines can produce millions of messenger molecules with a wide selection of demodulation threshold, we can help lower intersymbol interference and shorten the symbol duration. With the help of this cylindrical channel, it is possible to minimize intersymbol interference. We can calculate the data rate by dividing the channel capacity by the symbol duration. We observe that there is a critical value for the width of the cylindrical channel. For radii of 2 and 5 micrometers, there is a sharp decrease in performance after the distance between the transmitter and the receiver exceeds some limit. However, for a radius of 10 micrometers, we observe an improvement by an order of magnitude. Thank you for taking the advanced level in the Nano Networking and Molecular Communications module.